Before we get started, just a reminder to everybody that this is my personal way of solving this problem. For me, this is an efficient and clear way of solving this specific math problem. I highly advise that you watch the entire video without skipping so you'll fully understand the step-by-step -step process of solving this math problem. Feel free to rewind any segment of the video. I hope this video will make things easier for any of your needs. Thanks and enjoy the video. In this video, we will solve the 2020 mathematics problem 1-1. This is a reviewer for the Graduate School of Engineering Entrance Examination of the University of Tokyo. So the 2020 Mathematics Problem 1-1 is given as Answer the questions about the differential equation. Cosine of x times the second derivative of y with respect to x minus sine of x times first derivative of y with respect to x minus y over cosine of x equals 0 where x is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Let us denote this as equation 1. The first question is, a particular solution of equation 1 has the form of y equals cosine of x raised to m, where m is a constant. Find the constant m. Second question, find the general solution of equation 1 using the particular solution of question 1. To start solving this problem, we first utilize the provided particular solution, y equals cosine of x raised to m. We first determine its first derivative and second derivative, which we will later substitute to the original differential equation. So we are provided y equals cosine of x raised to m. We have the first derivative, dy over dx, as m times cosine of x raised to m minus 1 times negative sine of x by applying chain rule to cosine of x. Next, we will determine the second derivative, d squared y over dx squared. We can determine the second derivative by applying product rule to the first derivative. Let us have this group as the left group and then this group as the right group. So by product rule, the derivative would be left times the derivative of the right plus right times the derivative of the left group. This is equal to left m cosine of x raised to m minus 1 times derivative of the right. This is negative cosine of x plus right negative sine of x times derivative of the left. This is m times m minus 1 times cosine of x raised to m minus 2. Then applying again chain rule to cosine x, we will multiply negative sine of x. We can further simplify the second derivative d squared y over dx squared by combining similar terms. So we have negative m, so we extract this negative, and then combine cosine here. So cosine of x raised to m minus 1 times cosine of x, we have cosine of x raised to m. And then we cancel the negative signs. So we have plus m times m minus 1 times cosine of x raised to m minus 2 times sine of x squared. So we have the second derivative, the first derivative, and the original particular solution provided. So we substitute these three equations to the original differential equation. So for the first term, we multiply cosine of x to the second derivative. So we have, for the first term of the original differential equation, we have negative m times cosine of x raised to m plus 1, then plus m m minus 1 times cosine of x raised to m minus 1 times sine of x squared. So this is the first term in the original differential equation. Next, for the second term, we have negative sine x dy over dx. So we have minus sine x times the first derivative, which is m times cosine of x raised to m minus 1 times negative sine of x. And again, we can cancel the negative signs. 
And then for the last term, this is minus y over cosine x. Again, y is cosine of x raised to m. We divide that by cosine x. We have minus cosine x raised to m minus 1 equal to 0. As of this point, you can inspect that we have cosine of x raised to m minus 1 in the fourth, third, and second terms. However, in the first term, we have cosine of x raised to m plus 1. What we can do is extract m minus 1 power of cosine x from the m plus 1 power of cosine x in the first term. So we will have negative m cosine of x raised to m minus 1 times cosine of x squared. And then plus for the next term, let us distribute m to m minus 1. We have m squared minus m times sine x squared times cosine of x raised to m minus 1. And then plus m times, again, sine of x squared by combining these two terms. And then cosine of x raised to m minus 1. And then the last term is minus cosine of x raised to m minus 1. So we can now cancel all the cosine of x raised to m minus 1. So cancel here, cancel, cancel, and also cancel. We will be left with negative m times cosine of x squared plus let us distribute m squared minus m to sine of x squared. So we have m squared times sine of x squared minus m sine of x squared then plus m sine of x squared and then minus 1 equals 0. As you can see, we can cancel the third and the fourth term. And we will be left with negative m cosine of x squared plus m squared sine of x squared minus 1 equals 0. Let us rearrange somehow this equation. So we have m squared times sine squared x minus m cosine squared x equals 1. So we need to determine the value of m which will make this treatment true. And we can determine the value of m by using the trigonometric identity sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. And the value of m which will make this equation into this identity is when m is equal to negative 1. So by substituting negative 1, we have negative 1 squared times sine squared x minus negative 1 cosine squared x equals 1. And we will have the identity sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. So therefore, the value of m is negative 1. And our particular solution is actually y equals cosine of x raised to negative 1 or 1 over cosine of x or actually y is equal to secant of x. We will use now this particular solution to determine the general solution. So again, the next question is find the general solution of equation 1 using the particular solution of question 1. So we have previously determined that our particular solution is y equals 1 over cosine of x. So as of this point, we can first simplify the given differential equation. So from calculus, take note that the product rule looks like, let's say, derivative of xy is equal to xy prime plus x prime times y. This is applying product rule. We can see from the first two terms of the original differential equation that negative sine x is actually the derivative of cosine x, while d2y over dx squared is the derivative of dy over dx. Using this information, we can determine what is the original xy. 
So utilizing this information on product rule, we can determine the original value of this group XY, which is derivative with respect to X of cosine of X dy over dx. If we will apply product rule to cosine of x dy over dx, we will obtain cosine of x d squared y over dx squared minus sine of x dy over dx, which are the original two first two terms of the original differential equation. So, we can express the original problem as d over dx of cosine x dy over dx minus y over cosine of x equals 0. As of this point, we can already substitute our particular solution into this value of y. So we can have d over dx of cosine x dy over dx minus 1 over cosine squared of x equals 0. So rearranging this problem, we have d over dx times cosine x dy over dx equals 1 over cosine squared x, which is also the same as secant squared x. So simplifying, we have d cosine x dy over dx equals secant squared x dx and we take the integral of both sides so we have cosine of x dy over dx equals the integral of secant squared x is tangent of x we have tangent of x and then the first constant of integration so proceeding we can cancel or divide all the terms with cosine of x. So we have dy over dx equals tangent x over cosine of x plus c1 over cosine of x. Similarly, this is same as dy over dx equals secant x tangent x plus c1 secant of x. So we have dy equals secant x tangent x dx plus c1 secant x dx and integrate all the terms. So we'll have y equals the integral of secant x tangent x is simply secant x so secant x for the first term and then plus c1 the integral of secant x is ln of the absolute value of tangent of x plus secant of x plus c2 and we have the general solution to the original problem y is equal to secant x plus c1 the natural logarithm of the absolute value of tangent x plus secant x plus c2. And that's it for this video. If there are any questions, go on and leave a comment down below. I'll answer all your comments as soon as possible. If you want to see more videos from a somewhat unconventional small YouTuber, make sure to subscribe to this channel. Leave your thoughts down in the comments and turn on the post notification by clicking that bell button. Thanks and I'll see you in the next video.